Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and you are listening to Subhash Chandran. In this video, we are going to see how to become an expert in piping design. Most of us know that being an expert is not an easy task. We must do something really well in order to get recognized as an expert. So let's see how to become an expert in piping design by Subhash Chandran. And if you are a new viewer and not yet subscribed to my channel, I kindly request you to give me your subscription because your subscription is the only motivation for me to do more and more videos. Now let's see how to become an expert. But before getting into the subject, we must know who is an expert. Expert is a person who has mastered in a particular field. He is a guy who knows in and out of the subject. But it doesn't mean that he needs to be good in all the areas. But at the least, he must know all the essential part of the subject in order to become an expert in your field. So to become an expert in piping design, one must have essential knowledge about the areas that influences piping design. So the most important thing is to gain more knowledge about the subject. In order to do that, you must know the depth of the subject and the different areas to master in your field. So I believe that this video will definitely help you to understand the areas that you have to improve in order to become an expert and also educate you how much vast the subject is and also tell you the what is the magnitude of knowledge one should have to become an expert. In order to become an expert in piping design, one must have sufficient knowledge about the areas that I am going to list here. Initially, I have classified this into three major areas. One is core areas and the second one is a major influencing areas and the areas that are from other disciplines. Let's see each of these areas to understand what are the topics covered in these areas. So let's start with the core area. In core area, you must know about piping layouts. Layout in the sense, it's a piping layout. You must know the different configurations of piping layouts and guidelines. And the second important thing is that pipe stress analysis. You should know about the pipe stress analysis fundamentals. And the third important thing is about construction. You must know about the construction constructability. Only then you will be able to design the piping system. And the fourth one is piping material. You must know about the different MOCs and different piping materials used in the services. Let's go a little bit in depth to understand what are the subtopics involved in this area. So let's start with layout. When we talk about layout, it is known as a piping layout. So you must know the piping for pumps pipings for heat exchangers, piping for drums and pipings for tower and columns and piping for reactors and piping for tank forms and piping for uh, pipe racks and for compressors and turbines and underground facility. At least you must have a good knowledge about these areas before being recognized as an expert in piping design. Let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is pipe stress. In pipe stress you must know about the thermal expansion which means that the behavior of piping in different temperatures. And you should also know about the flexibility analysis in order to provide right amount of supports in right location. And the second thing is that you should also know about the pipe support design and details. And the fourth one is you should know about the nozzle loads and its impact on the equipments and pipings and supports. And the last one is that you should also know about the external forces that can impact the piping design and can disturb the piping system. Let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is about construction. When we talk about construction, the first thing we must know is about constructability. How a piping will be constructed, how it will be installed, how it will be erected. At least we must know the basic information and basic knowledge about the construction. And the second thing is that about accessibility, accessibility of valves, accessibility of instruments, accessibility of equipment that are installed along with the piping system. If we don't provide an accessibility, it will be hard for an operator to operate the plant. And the third one is about safety. We should consider the safety of the workforce that are going to install the entire system. And the fourth one is about testing. Piping design engineers should aware about the type of testing used in the different systems. We have hydro testing and pneumatic testing. So it is really important for a piping design engineer to aware about which testing needs to be done for a particular service. And the last one is about fabrication. Design engineers should aware about the fabrication of the piping. Only then you will be able to guide the fabricators if in case of any issues during the piping fabrication. Let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is about materials. When we talk about materials, the first thing you must know is about the role of MOC. Role of MOC plays a vital role in the life of piping system. So it's really important to understand the role of MOC. MOC is nothing but material of construction. And the second thing you must know is about the different types of materials that are used in the piping system. For high temperature different materials are used and for low temperatures different materials are used. So it's really important to understand the types of material used in different services. And the compatibility. Compatibility of the material with respect to the different fluid services. Because there are services with high corrosive nature and low corrosive nature. So different materials are used to ease the purpose of the life of the piping. And the fourth one is about certification. Different materials needs a different type of certification. Certification is nothing but an approval for a material so that it can be used in any piping system. 
so far we have covered the topics of core areas now let us see the topics of other areas one of the other area is an area which has a major influence in piping design so one such area is known as equipments in equipments we have two types static equipments and rotary equipments static equipments are pressure vessels tanks and drums rotary equipments are pumps compressors and turbine piping design engineer should have a knowledge about these equipments while designing the piping and the second one is maintenance instruments valves and equipments and few part of the piping are frequently removed in a plant to do a maintenance activity such as cleaning and washing so it is really important for a piping design engineer to consider to give a provision to do a maintenance for these items third one is about operation in a process plant operator frequently visits the valves instruments and equipments to check the condition of the equipments and in order to operate it according to the purpose of the productivity so it is really important for a piping design engineer to consider the impact of operations in design and the fourth one is about commissioning commissioning is a stage after the construction once you hand over the project to the client the client used to start up the system start up the whole system so you may require a vents drains such items in the piping design so piping designer should consider the provision of giving vents and drains during the part of a designing stage the last stage is a procurement procurement is a process of buying the material or arranging the material but this process has lots of activities to do activities such as writing a material specification sending the request to the vendor and receiving the quotation from vendor evaluating the quotation approving the vendor drawings and then send it back to the vendor and to receive the materials and to check whether the material meets the specification or not these are the different stages involved in procurement so piping design engineer should aware of the process of sequence to check the material status Let's move on to the next topic which is the last topic which is nothing but how much you know about the other discipline in order to do piping design we are depend on certain inputs from other discipline so it is really important for piping design engineer to understand the work process of other discipline with whom we are depending on certain inputs the first discipline is process process is a discipline from where we receive primary inputs such as pfd process flow diagram pnid process and instrumentation diagram line list where it specifies the design temperature design pressure operating temperature operating pressure and density and also various data sheets of inline items of piping the next discipline is civil and structures civil and structures design the structures and civil foundations based on the piping inputs so once the design part is done piping team and the civil structural team will sit together to ensure that the design is acceptable or not the next discipline is electrical electrical is a discipline that prepares the fundamental scheme for the supply of electricity to various equipments and instruments so there will be lots of electrical cables running across the plant both in above ground and as well as in underground so while doing a piping design it's really important to work along with the electrical team to ensure that none of the pipings are clashing with the above ground or underground cables the next discipline is instrumentation and control system is one of the discipline from where piping requires lots of inputs regarding instrumentation and control wells like size of the instrumentation data sheets of instrumentation and the end connections of instrumentation and the final vendor drawings of control valves so piping design engineer has to work along with the instrumentation engineer to do a continuous follow up to collect the final informations of all these instruments and control valves the next discipline is safety safety engineers evaluate the overall safety of the plant in terms of process and as well as the infrastructure safety say for an example safe distance maintaining between buildings and equipments and escape route in case of fire and proper accessible roads for all the areas in case of emergencies so all these requirements are addressed in safety see based on safety requirements piping design may change so it's really important for a piping design engineer to work along with the safety engineers to ensure that the layout that we are making is safe enough for operation and the next discipline is cost piping design engineer should also aware about the cost implication of the project most of the time in a project the cost engineer or the estimation engineer will come back to the design engineer to ask whether we can cut down the cost whether we can reduce the overall cost of the project so piping design engineer must be in a position to understand the requirements of the estimation engineer and to be able to change the design and to optimize the overall design to ensure that the economical package is delivered the next discipline is planning planning is an important stage in a project piping design engineer should know how to plan the entire design phase he must know how much maneuvers is required for layout and how much maneuvers are required for isometrics mto and other deliverables 
so that he can make a certain plan based on which planning engineers will develop an overall plan and also he will interact with other disciplines to ensure that all the coordinated efforts are streamlined are structured in such a way that when an input comes from one discipline and other discipline can start their work so unless until if a design engineer cannot give a proper timeline for their deliverables planning engineer may not be able to make a perfect plan i guess now you will be able to understand the knowledge required to become an expert in piping design and the diversity of the subject if someone wants to become an expert in piping design they must know the knowledge of all these areas that i have shown now you don't need to have a sound knowledge in all these areas but at least you must know the essential part of it if this much you know you are surely an expert because the fact is that of all the design engineers in the world only less than 5% of design engineers have a knowledge about all these areas so i believe that this video has helped you to understand the important areas where you wanted to improve yourself thanks for listening to me and thank you for watching my videos if you like this video give me a like and also share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because as i used to say your subscription is the only thing that gives me a motivation to do more and more videos i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra